this stall. So now we are moving to our next stall, where Jenny Nordquist will present this year class Leave and Hope Scholar Lisa Grip. And I'm moving my microphone to Jenny. Okay, thank you. At the festival, National Fed Festival, we have a long tradition in handling out the Class Leven Up Scholarship. Uh, the Class Leven Up Scholarship Fund for Young Photographer, it was founded after Class Death in 1990. Class Leven Up was in many ways a classical photographer, but with his own personal way. Images of fashion, food, gardening, Portraits and commercials like Flora, Titi Bear, Jane Helen had their own often undated calm but never boring character. After his death in 1990, the largest part of his collection was stored at Landskrona Museum. The scholarship is of 20,000 krona and it aims to help further the career of an up and coming photographer. Uh, the board of the foundation uh, consists of Tony Levenhaupt, who is also the chairwoman, Gary Johansson, Janne Jönsson, Jara Nyström, Jenny Linde and myself. I am oh, also, the scholarship, there's also an exchange of a body of work of the scholar and the foundation. And I'm very happy and very honored so on behalf of the foundation, uh, to announce that this year's scholar is Lisa Grip. Lisa Grip, she took her master's degree in art at Konsvak in 19, 2019. Before that, she studied photography at Academy Valand. And since her graduation, she has exhibited internationally. And in 2023, in the spring, she will exhibit the Transcruna photo together with Anna Lindostam, and we're very excited about that, so you all have to come back then. Um, in the reason for selecting Lisa Grip as this year's scholarship holder, the foundation's chairwoman, Tony Levenhoff, she says the following. Lisa Grip is a strange nature photographer. In her pictures, there are neither sunsets, trees, nor deserted moors. Lisa's landscape belongs to the human who rests in itself like hills, valleys, deserts, and clearings. Lisa's large-scale pictures, they take over. They refuse the other objects in the room. Only want light in the unexpected meeting between the still bodies of the picture and the limited spatiality of existence. Now, I'd like to hand over one of Klaus Levenhoff's images to you, Lisa, as a gift from the foundation on top of that ward. <laughs> so, <laughs> they oh, yeah, they show it to the order. Mm -hmm. And showing it to the yes. audience as well. <laughs> we thought this was very suitable for you to have. Okay, and then I will hand over the floor to you to talk about your work for the audience and show some images as well of your work. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, set them here. Uh, thank you very much for the grant. I'm very honored. Uh, I will uh, talk uh, and show my work and uh, how I work, and also a background, or my background, which leads me to where I am today. Um, and uh, yeah, as uh, you said, Jenny, I, you already told my background a bit, <laughs> where I took a BA in. Uh, fine art photography in uh, the Valand Academy in Gothenburg, and also a master in uh, Konstfak, uh, at Konstfak in Stockholm. Um, and I uh, see myself as a photographer, a director, an observer, and a voyeur. Uh, and yeah, my picture is already here. And during my bachelor, I got interested in working with close relationships between human beings. Uh, because as we all know, they are very complex. 
And from the beginning, the work revolved around humans' conscious and unconscious power relations. And uh, I examined repealed boundaries bet between play and violence, situations where limits were pushed and sometimes went too far. Uh, I brought people that had a close relationship together in front of my camera and directed them to physically measure themselves against each other. And it was important that they had a close relationship and it was also important that I had a close relationship to those depicted. In that context, there were no need for so many words. Uh, now I will show you a clip from the video work Elskarna, the lovers in English, where I have captured my previous lover Victor and my current partner Erik in an embrace of a wrestling match on a beach next to my house. I saw them as one and same as they clashed, two symbiotic bodies in a struggle simultaneously working with and against each other. Can you turn it on? Yeah, uh, so from this point, I realized that it was rather the similarities than the differences between human beings that were interesting to me. So from here, I continued to, with the help of my camera, investigate close and intimate relations and power uh, relations in between them. So I filmed and photographed uh, neighbors, best friends, siblings, and also separately both my father and my mother. Um, and with this, uh, oh, it's me who do this. So with this material, I made a film installation called Emsa Os. In English, I think it's like Shed, shed Us, yeah. Uh, so this is three projections in relation to each other and I put the viewer as the fourth wall. In practical terms, the film has been recorded with a Super 8 camera, which creates a uh, grainy and aesthetic. And this technical choice entails a limitation of the photographic material, but also a time limitation with three minutes exposed material. And to let something be untouched, I only did one recording of the situations without any rehearsal. And now I will show you an excerpt of uh, this video installation. Uh, can you turn it on for me? It's like one and a half minutes, I think. Two minutes.
So a, a Super 8 camera does not record sound. And the absence of sound makes the film's approach photography for me. So I've been looking for a kind of uh, moving photography or an extended photography. The, over the years, as I have arranged similar situations between uh, people close to me, I've been reflecting a lot about my role as a director uh, and an artist with camera, how I influence situations between people in front of my camera within a composition that I have created and forced to happen. Now I will make a jump into my studio in the process of my exhibition Våta knän, which is wet knees in English. Uh, so during the last couple of years, I spent a lot of time in the dark room where I developed my own photographic mix technique, uh, where I paint certain parts in the picture with black and white chemistry and let the rest remain lumen print which means that they continue to be uh, exposed outside of the dark room. Uh, so now I will try to explain my process. Uh, this is a test strip. Uh, the right dimension for this work is two meter longer on the height. Um, so here I first exposed the paper um, with an enlarged negative on. Uh, on the floor in the dark room, and afterwards I painted the developer on with a brush and my fingers. And in in the dark room's dim red light, I stand near the paper, which I have stretched on a large board, tilted inside the development bench. I can't quite see where I'm developing or how the chemistry poured down the paper, and in the tight space, I feel limited and focused. I try to find the right moment to stop the development. In the darkness, I paint stop and fixative on and try to match the same area on the paper as where the developer has been. Mm. And after the darkroom process, I hang the papers in my studio. Uh, and from their bodies and almost two meters up, I leave the paper untouched. So it continues to be exposed over time. The top part of the paper get different color depending on how I treat it. Like in what light I expose it for and for how long time. Normally around the week before I bring it to the dark room again to fix it, it uh, lastly. Uh, so this is after fixating. So this is another image, and here I instead exposed the paper with an enlarged negative on for over a week in sunlight before I fixate it. And this is the result. Uh, this is Siggy and Jeffro, one and two. They are twins, and I've been trying to depict them for many years. Uh, their mother tell me that they hate each other and never enter the same room as the other. Uh, but every time I ask them to be in front of my camera, they both say yes individually. And for me, that's interesting to let them meet on a field in an arranged situation. They can be close to each other, which you are both when you fight and wrestle, but also when you hug. 
And in these moments, it seems like they've been stuck in each other forever. So this is like a close up and here you can see the, maybe not because it's too light, but uh, you can see like the movements from my hand and where the chemicals have like flowed. And in the face, like it looks like a shadow, but it's like different exposures. Uh, the development have been there longer and so on. Uh, and here as well. And these two works are a diptych, uh, and they were a part of my solo exhibition, Vota Knän, Wet Knees. Uh, and the title is inspired from the first picture I showed you, uh, this photograph, uh, depicting two women after a wrestling match in the grass, and one of them with wet knees directed towards the camera. And with the title Vota Knän, Wet Knees, I'm referring to something bodily, but also to a state of mind. Having wet knees means that something has taken place. Wet knees could be an outcome of a forced situation or a trustful situation. It could be something playful or something intimate. It talks about surrender, gravity, rituals, and maybe that something is at risk. Now I will show you the whole exhibition, Vota Knän. And here is uh, little sister Anna carrying uh, her older sister Ilva. And these Lumen photographs overlap each other and are forced against the wall with glass. And combined to this, I showed uh, uh, the video work Elskarna, as I showed you, and a video collage uh, with leopard slugs mating. It's a double-sided video installation projected on frosted glass. Mm. And I will show you uh, an excerpt from it here. So this video collage consists of four couples of leopard slugs mating. They are hermaphrodites and can fertilize themselves, but they can mate too. One of the slugs leads the other. They entwine their bodies around each other and hang down from a thick, slimy thread. They avert their long blue penises from behind their heads and then twine those as well and form a vulva-like shape where they exchange sperm packages. It's as if their internal organs are merging and when the act is ended, they pull in their penis in the body and leave each other. And that's what's happening here. Uh, I find, found them very repulsive, but at the same time I think there is something attractive in their alien-like form of act. Um, so this piece I installed hanging rather high from the ceiling, opposed to the other works in the exhibition which all has a low center of gravity, hang low on the wall and even uh, uh, standing straight on the ground. Uh, and this is from the other side, uh, where you can see the video work, el video work Elskarna and the leopard slugs at the same time. Uh, and this leopard slugs mating process are in a way the raw and primitive uh, content of my interest in intimate relations between human beings. And this is how you could see the leopard slugs and 
elskarna together. And since 2012, I've been working with two other men close to me. It's my father, Lars, and his best friend from birth, Ingmar. They are inseparable, and it's always been a question of who my real father is, since my mother had a relation with both of them. I repeatedly photographed and filmed them in different intimate positions. I've also filmed myself when I directed them, and in the exhibition Bota Clan, I completely removed the camera instead and let them act as a living installation in the exhibition room. So when I worked with them in front of my camera, a distance was created that allowed me to see them as symbols, movements, bodies, a form, a feeling. And all of this I experienced that I was able to influence in different directions. But in this context, context I couldn't control them anymore. And by remo removing the camera between us, I let go of my control and allowed the viewer to choose gaze. But most importantly, I let Lars and Ingmar be present as living subjects in the room. So I here investigated what happened is in this power shift and how was one, does one behave without a camera as a photographer. Mm, later that year, I got an invitation to make an exhibition at the Italian Cultural Institute and to activate the large furnished window designed by Gio Ponti. And there I filled two of the windows with an enlarged negative of my father and his best friend. In the picture, they lie on a cliff and my father embraces his best friend from behind. I separated the embrace and let the architecture of the windows create a gap between them. The light passed through my father and Ingmar, this cocoon of male love and cast a shadow over, over large lumen photographs. They were unfixed and slowly faded to dark when they were exposed for light. And the piece is called Through the Death of Complete Intimacy. Yeah, this is a detail. So this is the last image. Uh, currently, I'm working on an exhibition for Landskrona Foto in March 2023, together with my colleague Anna Lindersham. And uh, here I will continue my work around close and intimate relationships, where we constantly have to regulate closeness and distance where you either risk getting too close and feeling merged and dissolved in each other or too distanced, and the distance makes it impossible to feel the closeness that we need. A closeness that is dangerous and requires sacrifices. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I think there are some minutes, right? Yeah. yeah. No question. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, the photocopies you did that you left out in the sun for some time, you talked about? Sorry, say again, the, the photo... The, the photocopies that you left out in the sun for a week, you oh, yeah. talked about? Um, was that understood correct? You left them out 
in the sunlight for a week and that gave you that look and the chemicals you talked about. Exactly, yeah. the color uh, on the photographs. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was wondering, like, apart from the aesthetics that it gives you, did you, like, incorporate, like, the waiting time into your process? Like, did it have an effect on your process? Did you think about what does it mean for this photo to, like, slowly be developed over a week by the sun? Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, if I understand it correctly. Like, I think it's, again, as I said, like with, with the video works that I showed you, that I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm looking for like a extended photography in a way uh, all the time, or like a um, yeah, prolonged photography. And I think that process that is like, it takes a long time and it's like, uh, requires something from me. Uh, it doesn't like, it's just not there. I have to like make it. Uh, and for me, that's important in a way. And also like with where I, pa I paint it on, like to, I, I have like my hands on their bodies <laughs> in a way. Um, Yeah. Does that come from a feeling of th like feeling it's too easy to just do a photo, have it developed and then scan <laughs> it and there you have it? Like No, I mean that could be like the the hardest <laughs> to like make the perfect just uh, copy of an image. So no, I mean I I don't I don't say that that's the e that there is like one easy and one hard way at all. It's more, yeah, it's two different ways. Uh, so no. no. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? No. no. Thanks well. for listening. Thank you very much, Lisa, for this deeply reflective presentation. Yeah.